Let's talk about women and finance. There is a new educational platform for women launched recently in Hong Kong and Singapore that looks at the gender wealth and the gender investing gap that is uh, often felt for women investors. Uh, talking to us now are Tanya Rolf and Christine Yu. They are the co-founders of SophiaWomen.com, which is that educational platform. Ladies, good morning. Welcome to Money FM here in Singapore. Great to have you with us today. Good morning. It's great to be on the show. Thanks for having us. Nice. And good morning. Uh, Good morning, Tanya. Uh, maybe you can start. I'm not sure who wants to start off first by giving us the overview of uh, of, of SophiaWomen.com. Tanya, is that you or Christine? Who, who would like to do it? Okay. Okay. Go, 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 Christine. <laughs> Flip a coin. <laughs> Sophia okay. is simply a very exciting education platform focused on women for all mm. things finance and investing. We're really here to create a space for women to learn, invest, and through mm. their dollars and change the world. And before we get into okay. the details, I'm just That's curious, good. where did the name come from? Sophia. Tanya, you want to take this one? Yeah. It's, um, so um, we were looking for something short and sharp, but something feminine sounding. Um, and also Sophia means wisdom in Greek. So given we're an educational platform and we're all about education, um, wisdom just seemed like a perfect um, choice. And Sophia just rolls off the tongue for us. <laughs> that's a great that's, that's a good backstory as well um tell us about some of the specifics of of what you cover on the website i've put the url in our facebook live chat for folks they can get on the site and have a look at it but it there is uh you know there is something really for everybody for for women for investors for uh cor corporations for other people how, how does how is it structured for folks to learn so there's a lot of trends um, in education generally. There's the, the desire for upskilling. There's a desire for bite-sized learning. Um, and Sophia was really built around those targeted at women and really providing them a place to learn all things finance. So hmm. our, I guess, our hero course, if you will, is really on a master class on the basics of angel investing. We're starting there, you know, Tanya, myself, and our other co-founder, Nicole, um, were very much entrenched in the gender lens investing community in the region. So this is really our, our wheelhouse and our expertise. But having hmm. said that, um, really, Women need to learn everything about finance and investing. And so, you know, we don't stop at early stage investing. We started with possibly, you know, one of the, the more the harder, the more complex topics, but certainly not inaccessible now that Sophie is here. We're really going to build a, a really exciting suite um, of learning courses um, focused on, you know, basic kind of finance management to investing to angel investing. So it's, it's really the gamut of anything that you would need to know to get control of your finances and build wealth. Tanya, I'm always interested in the origin story. What was it that you were seeing or what gaps were there that you felt needed to be filled with the Sophia initiative? I mean, maybe paint a picture for our listeners what the scenario was like for women in business. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, and I love answering this one. So thank you for directing that to me. Um, so so for me, Sophia, and, and there's three of us, three co-founders, we all have slightly different um, angles and, and motivations for starting Sophia. But for me, I'm based in Singapore and I was running a venture fund in Singapore for women entrepreneurs. And one of the biggest challenges that I could see as a, as a fund manager was capital raising. And one of the probably the lowest moments of my career personal like personal very personal to me was that this struggle of capital raising for a fund um that i was managing which was for women entrepreneurs and i just realized it was a huge moment in my life where i realized just how biased the flow of capital is in the world and what that meant for women everywhere so this doesn't just affect women in the finance world because they're not getting 
you know, promotions. This affects every woman everywhere because the products and services that we have in the world are, are catapulted and are provided capital through venture funding more often than not. And if women are not getting any venture funding or less than 3%, which is currently where we're at at the moment, then mm -hmm. businesses are not being led by women, very little female-led innovation, very little um, businesses built for women. So then do we have a world that's largely built by men for men? And I came away from that experience of running the fund and realized that there is a bigger problem than just that I can solve with just one venture capital fund. Actually, I need to step back and empower, equip, educate, tool up women everywhere to take control of their finances, to mobilize the money that we already hold as a, as a gender. We're 51% of the population. We hold $93 trillion of wealth by the end of this year. And so we, if we can mobilize that capital and direct that towards women who are building businesses for women, and that's, that's where Sophia came from. And that, that's my objective. Mm. Stop taking away our privileges in a patriarchal society, <laughs> <laughs> Neil. Um, it's Tanya. I, I love I love what you're talking about. That three percent of, of venture funding going to women. Do we notice? Do you notice a um, uh, a split either generationally or geographically in those types of numbers and the funding that goes to uh, female driven businesses? Is it, for example? more difficult for women in Asia to get access to funding than in Western nations, etc. Are there those sorts of differences or generationally as well? Um, so I think, I think broadly speaking, I mean, I've, when I was working in, I'm from London. So when I was working in London, I worked within law firms. So my, my own personal experience is specific to Asia when I've been in, since I've been in the investing space. Um, so I think when you look at the, the data, and there's very little data for Asia, Southeast Asia specifically, because there's very little research that's gone into it, and, and funding is still a relatively new thing than, than say, the West. Yeah. So the data isn't necessarily, um, it, we don't have enough of that data. But from my experience, I think that probably Asia is somewhat, um, is marginally better in terms of its data than I would say the West is, um, but not materially so. When you look at countries like, um, when you look at parts of Europe who have been banging the gender equality drum for many, many more years than we have in Asia, the data does not actually result in significantly more funding being driven to women. So uh, when and you, sorry, sorry yeah. to break in because, uh, because as I understand it, for example, things like board placement and C-suite placement is higher in the West for women than it is in Asia for women. Is, is that still, is that still the case? And if it is, so it's interesting that, that the West is, has a higher board representation of, of women, but as a lower funding, uh, perhaps in Asia does. Is, am I seeing, am I uh, interpreting that right? I think for on board seats, I think in the region, you know, it's, it's, even within Asia, it's actually quite patchy, right? You have certain countries where it's better. Um, Malaysia, okay. for example. Um, um, also, for example, in the Philippines where I'm from, you re really, we do have a lot of C-suite leaders. In fact, we've had female presidents, plural. Um, mm. So I think that you in China as well, there's a, there's a lot of C-suite participation um, in corporates, in banking. Um, but I think that it's a lot of it also is you know for example in hong kong it's it's really not great i don't believe it's also the case in singapore so it's very patchy across the region um i think the second point i do want to make is that i think we're still kind of battling this culture um issue right because mm. someone asked me recently you know how how can you say that women don't control money when um, you know, it's the mate in the Asian kind of archetype and Asian culture. It's 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 the mother. It's 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 the woman who controls the household finances, um, and that's very much the case. But when you look at the investing side of the equation, it's it's the mother's good at like you know managing costs and budgets, and it's 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 the mother who holds the purse strings or it's a female. But it's by large um, the investing activity is 
kind of given to to the male um, in 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 households, and that's that's part of a culture. And I think you know that that's actually the the thing that we're also trying to to change a bit because um, we need to make sure that women can control more money um, and grow their wealth. Um, and that's that's what we're trying to build with Sophia. Christine, you've anticipated a, something that's very interesting to me, that you're both in different parts of the region. And when we say Asian views and Asian stereotypes, it's a huge swathe of people, different yes. races, different cultures, different religions. In your experiences, maybe Christine first and also Tanya, do you see a difference between some of the countries you mentioned, Hong Kong, Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia, within each of those respective cultures, do you see a difference or what are the differences in how women are viewed in business and investment? That's really interesting. So just speaking from my own personal experience, I like to say that I grew up into my adulthood, anyway, um, on a trading floor. Um, so I'm a capital markets person through and through. And, you know, there's a common trope that we like to, you know, that many kind of that's in the press, that there aren't a lot of women in finance. Actually, there are. There are a lot of women in finance. There's a lot of women entering finance. But what was very stark and jarring to me in my career was we didn't see enough women in leadership positions in finance. On the trading floor, I didn't see a lot of female traders. I didn't see a lot of female bosses. I didn't see a lot of heads of desk really running P&L. So I think for me, that was just kind of a very jarring um, experience where you actually do. I mean, I worked in New York trading floors too, and really, I, I thought that there were much more, many more women actually on on our Hong Kong trading floor um, mm -hmm. than than I experienced in in the U.S., which is kind of an interesting um, perspective. So I think that we are seeing a lot of female participation. I think across many countries in Asia, in the workforce, women are working more than ever in history and earning more money than ever in history. But I think, you know, where, what, what is the commonality um, that, I, that I've experienced um, in, in my own career is that we're just not seeing um, enough leadership and enough um, women controlling those, those purse strings and those investment dollars. And, and Tanya, how about you? Yeah, um, so thank you. I think that, um, you know, obviously I, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Christine. Um, so we're targeting um, in Asia, we're targeting largely at the moment Singapore, Hong Kong. And I think the differences are evident um, or self-evident. And I think um, um, that, sorry, the similarities. Um, so I think that... Um, I think that with Sophia, we're able to build a suite of products like Christine mentioned at the beginning, which means that we're able to um, attract and to provide a service for women at various levels, because you're absolutely right. I mean, if we look at, say, India, for example, um, have a large English speaking population, which is fantastic for us. Uh, but are they all going to be jumping into angel investing and venture capital? Probably not. Um, so we need to understand that market and provide, you know, products and services that we think are, are large, um, broadly more accepted and adopted in those regions. So, mm. yes, we are. We're not trying to be everything to every country across Asia and kind of wrap it up in the same um, wrapping and, and thinking that everyone is the same. We, we wholeheartedly appreciate that it's not and providing a full suite from, you know, financial basics 101 to deep dives into cryptocurrency um, and um, and, and venture capital, et cetera, is, is not going to is not the same route for everyone. So it's not a one size fits That's all. Right. Yeah. Well, on that point, one size fits all, we've already got requests from people to join. One of our listeners has <laughs> asked, Stanley, how can I get my wife to join Sophia? So, I mean, people will be listening. Uh, uh, women will be listening in Singapore and overseas, and they will be interested in joining. I mean, how do they go about it? And, and what would be the first steps that you recommend they take? Well, we have a wonderful website, sophiawomen.com. 
um, and we have a membership if you want to just get a feel for Sophia. But if you even want to take a step back from that, we actually do hold monthly events. So um, it's, it's an opportunity for anyone to really kind of experience um, Sophia um, and understand what we're about. So we actually have an upcoming event on February 16th um, about um, the gender lens opportunity and investing trends for 2022. So that should be an amazing event with Stephanie Ko, formerly of Gobi, um, and uh, at Ealing at, at 500 uh, Global. So I think really exciting things. So events, um, we have a membership that you can join. Um, but also we've got the new Investor Essentials, which is our masterclass into the introduction, um, introduction to angel investing and many uh, more quick, courses. To quick, quick question. Uh, actually, two questions. Uh, first is um, age. Is this as appropriate for someone who's in school, university, as it is for uh, someone who's reentering the workforce after years and years? Uh, that's the first question. Second question is, uh, what, did I, what was it? Um, oh, I forgot what the second question is, but I'll, I'll add a comment, which is um, I've already put your link in the Facebook Live uh, comments. Maybe you can put that event uh, link in there as well. But back to the first one. For example, could my daughter who is in secondary school, could she get on the website and learn or is it more age specific? So I think that... Um I think that one of the things we recognized with, with Sophia is when we were building angel investing and venture capital, um, we realized that there are a, you know, a huge amount of women, most of them, you know, are, are even Christine and my, my own friends, professionals, highly educated, great, su successful career, corporate careers, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings in their bank accounts. Are they on top of their absolute basic financials? Not always mm. and not mm. often, actually. So we, we, we recognize that we need to start um, with the foundational kind of courses around getting your, you know, your ducks aligned, your incomings, your outgoings, get that secured, pay off your debt, et cetera, et cetera, before you can start, you know, delving into cryptocurrency. And I know that that's not super interesting, but it's it's imperative that you do it's that. Foundation, foundational. It's foundations, yeah. foundations. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. foundations for everything. And yeah. and so with that in mind, whether you're 40 years old and working in a very senior role at Facebook or you're 21 and just finished university, those those foundations are needed. So it's just about stepping onto the Sophia journey at the right stage for you. So Got yes, it. it's open mm -hmm. for everyone. If you want to start investing into a venture fund because you've done our courses and you're like, great, I'm ready to go and throw a couple of hundred thousand dollars into somewhere. Of course, you need to be an accredited investor. You need to have a, you know, a, which, which means you need to earn a certain amount of money or have accumulated a certain mm -hmm. amount of wealth. So that, you know, excludes some people through through those that that means I and mean, it's there to protect people as you well know but in terms of education that, that's open to anyone and anyone of any age you can never be exactly. too young to learn about yep. basic financial literacy well i think our young producer nora is typing it in as we speak i think there's a coup <laughs> in a midst here she's looking up to overtake us but finally christine uh, i'll just ask you what do you see what do you hope is the future for Sophia? We're really excited. I love this question. Um, we're really thinking big here. Um, Sophia is just a start. We've launched in Hong Kong, Singapore, um, and in Australia. Um, we're, we're a regional team, um, and we're really looking to launch more courses um, and, and really bring a lot of women on this journey. We're looking to expand to other geographies um, very quickly, we hope. Um, but I think for us, really, what's the win? The win is every woman coming on and making a decision and saying, I want to control my money. I want to vote for a world that I want to see with my money. Um, and it's the next woman after that, the next woman, and the next woman. And we want to create a ripple effect. Um, of empowerment, um, not just in Asia, but also beyond. Well, as a father well, of a young girl, I can only say magnificent. Yeah. I wish you the best yeah. of luck, sincerely. Brilliant really, stuff. really good. Uh, the the educational platform is called SophiaWomen.com. You can get on there and take a look at it. Tanya Rolf and Christine Yu, the co-founders. Thanks, ladies, for being with us on Money FM. And, and one ask from me, and that is, as you come up with more success stories of 
of women who have gone through your course and are doing interesting things. Um, can, will you please come back and, and bring them on and, and introduce them to the world and show us what, they're, what they've been up to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't.